Pro Boxing fans here with Mr. A.Y. and to the yard. We're down here at the Peacock Gym in Canning Town. A.Y., how are you keeping today? Oh, I'm fantastic. How are you? Very well, thanks, mate. August 24th, the Beast from the East heads east to take on modern great Sergei Kovalev. I just want to get your emotions and reactions to sort of the unusual and sort of unconventional chain of events that led to this fight being made. I want to take that right back to Frank giving you the call. I presume it was Frank. Talk to me about your the initial reaction to hearing the news you might be travelling to Russia. Swear done. Swear. Say nothing. So we're, we're, definitely, we're definitely fighting. It's in Russia. How much are you getting paid? <laughs> Jeez. Say nothing. Let's go out there and do it. <laughs> that was my reaction. Yes. Yes. I'm happy as Kovalev. I'm happy as somewhere as daunting as Russia. I'm happy we're fighting a Russia in Russia. A Russian in Russia. It's just, it's fantastic. It's magnificent. This is, well, it's a lot more fantastic than glasses. <laughs> but I'm saying it's fantastic. <laughs> no hesitation then. <laughs> no hesitation. Uh, moving on. Um, Kovalev originally didn't enroll on Tavada. Again, this is sort of an unusual um, sort of uh, thing to happen in the build-up to a fight. Give us your sort of initial reaction to hearing the news that he hasn't enrolled. When I heard he didn't enroll, I just raised my eyebrows twice, and um, I said, "I bet." I just said, "I bet the fight don't happen now." And again, lo and behold, it didn't happen on June 29th. Um, I'm not accusing anybody. I'm not saying why he didn't enrol the first time. Um, <clears throat> and I would just say this. I don't think they expected me to take the fight. That's just me being honest. They didn't expect me to say yes to going to Russia. They didn't expect me to say yes to so many things. Because again, we were trying to get the fight in England. But I'm happy we're going to Russia for this fight. Yes, because it makes the accomplishment so much more sweet. Um, it makes it so much more, you know, incredible. It, 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 seemed, it seemed like an impossible task, but everything's impossible until it's done. And then the next thing that happened, the rumours began to swirl. The World Boxing Super Series light heavyweight tournament was something we heard about. We then heard about money. Um, did you want to say something on that? No, I'm saying I forgot about that. <laughs> was there any substance to that? Um, I, I, well, it just, again, it's something I can look at and nod and just laugh. But again, I'm, I'm a person that trusts in the, um, in the process. So if that's what was going to happen, it was always going to happen. And then we hear, step aside, Bunny, Canelo Kovalev potentially on the table. What goes through your mind when you hear that, after all, the, all that's preceded it? Well, first thing I said was, um, how much? <laughs> I said, um, step aside, Bunny, um, how much? Um, but again, <laughs> when the, the number got thrown at us, I said, me or you? I said, me or you? No, we're fighting. We're having a fight and I'm going to get paid and take the belt. So, again, it's a win-win situation. Um, as I said before, you know, going to Russia and doing it this way, the hardest way possible against the, you know, I think he was Ring Magazine's um, best fighter of the year. Um, he was unified champion. You know, he's, he's got a fantastic record. He, oh, it's, it's just all, it just all looks better when Anthony Yeo goes there and just and wins by KO. And on to the man himself, Sergei Kovalev, a modern great. Would you agree that to this point in your career that you haven't faced anyone with um, as good an offence as Kovalev? 100%. 100%. It's, been, it's, it's shown. Um, but again, well, I think Kovalev's going to realise that he hasn't fought anyone that hits like me um, in his whole career. And I feel like that will, he, he, will, he will know that from, from the first... He, don't, he won't see the first punch, but when he feels it, um, he's going to be like, he's going to see his eyes open just like all my other opponents. Um, I'm just looking forward to it. Again, when I'm talking like this, it's not, it's not bragging or boasting. It's a confidence you need to instill within yourself. And um, you just need to believe in what you're saying. And um, when I go out there and do it, and I jump up on the top rope, and I do my rock, the rock celebration, I put my arm over my, over my head, fan, fan the belt around a little bit. I tense, <laughs> and I sniff the air, I sniff that Russian air. Taste the Russian air. Hopefully, no one throws any bottles at me or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up on the stage and say, "Big guns, Jeremy." Literally, it's one of the things. It's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be all the better.
I've, I've listened to 100 questions today about you going over to Russia. Let's try and take a different stance on it. <laughs> yes. um, when me and Tundi had an interview uh, a couple of months ago, we spoke about travelling to a hostile environment, and he said to me, you've grown up from your own experiences, been in sort of hostile areas and things. Um, do you feel that your experiences in childhood has prepared you for going into an environment that you may be potentially not welcoming? My, my life and my environment and where I was brought up prepared me for boxing in general because the way I, it's the way I think and when a certain situation happens, I look at it differently. So, you know, when you're growing up and you, you hear so much things being said or you see how one person can start a rumour that affects somebody else and it wasn't even a true rumour and you see how it might affect that person. So, little things like that taught me to not worry about opinions. You don't really worry about other people's opinions, you worry about your opinion and sometimes the opinions of the people you choose to surround yourself with. But sometimes outside opinions build um, unauthentic pressure. It builds a perception in your mind which makes you do things out of your own character. So um, when, I, when, I started, when I acknowledged all these things and I said to myself, the only opinion that matters is my own for my life, because it's me living it. <laughs> um, it was like a big weight lifted off my shoulders. Literally, I had a, I had a, I had a barbell and I threw that shit. So I don't know if I'm say, but I threw that shit. Um, and again, I just felt a lot better within myself. I started boxing. There was no pressure on my shoulders. Although there was pressure in reality, in my mind, in my little bubble that I'm in, there was no pressure. I was enjoying myself. I was loving life. I was training, going out there in the ring, having fun, knocking people out. And, um, yeah, it's all led me to this moment. So it's all going to be the same thing. I'm going to be in my bubble, literally. I'm going to be in the sky. I'm going to be on that plane, but I'm going to be in my own little bubble. I'm going to get the ring in my own little bubble. <laughs> I'm going to knock out cover level in my own little bubble. Come back in my own little bubble. I might step outside that bubble after I win for like 30 seconds, breathe in a different bit of fresh air, and then step back in my bubble. <laughs> That's what it's about. My life, my little bubble. You brought me on quite nicely, I guess, to your bubble and, and opinions. Uh, Tundi and I shared a interview that I'd say uh, set the cat among the pigeons. Uh, it went, I guess, viral is the word we describe it these days. The words, uh, Anthony Yard has a better skill set than Andre Ward. Uh, yeah, took the uh, Twitter um, and social media by storm. Yes. When that message, when you may have seen that video and the reaction that sort of came on the back of it, what was your reaction? Ha, ha, ha. He, he, he. He, <laughs> I started laughing. Because the, re the reason why I laugh at these kind of things is because the same thing I was saying about when you're in, in secondary school. If someone says something that everyone else don't agree with, everyone turns and says, with anger and says, why are you saying that? You're not allowed to say that. Why not? The world is full of opinions. When you listen to the politicians talking, sometimes it's opinionated. You can't be angry at, at someone's opinion. You, know, you, can be, you can be angry at, um, at ignorance. You can be angry at, at certain things. But when someone's just confident within themselves, um, someone's confident within the people they surround themselves with. So Tunde is just literally confident within himself, confident within me. So if he believes, Tunde is meant to say Anthony's the best fighter to ever live because he trains me. I'm meant to say I'm the best, I'm the best fighter that's ever lived or I'm going to be the best fighter that's ever lived because I'm a fighter. Floyd Maver said it in one of his last, in one of his final interviews, he said, if you're not in the sport to be the best, you're in the wrong sport. People Again, bashed um, Floyd May for saying he's number one. He done, a, he done a show and I was laughing, yeah? I agreed with him, but I was laughing. They put all these fighters on the board on a show that he was on. <laughs> they had Ali, they had Sugar Robinson, they had Chavez, and they had Floyd and all those kind of things. I think they put it in the order that they think. He took his picture and put it straight at the top and was nodding at it, like saying, yeah, absolutely. Me, myself, number one, because of course. <laughs> I fought the most world champions ever in history, <laughs> taking the least punishment. That's what I'm saying. So he has that confidence within himself. And to somewhat degree, he was talking facts. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people didn't like it because they're Chavez fans, or because they're Muhammad Ali fans, or they're because they're Matt Tyson fans. So they're going to look at him and be like, oh, I hate this guy. He thinks he's just the best. Why are you going to be angry at someone for having confidence within himself? Andre Wood, because you're talking about him, he might. Again, I don't think like he should have taken offence to it. He should have, just, he should have nodded and said, I see this young kid. Like, he's a young kid that's coming up. He's meant to be confident. 
Same way he was confident when he was coming up and he was like, and may, whether he said it in his mind or he said it outright, he was saying, I'm going to take over, I'm going to dominate the middleweight division or the um, super, weight, the super middleweight division, I'm going to dominate. I'm sure he had these, um, these thoughts and this kind of mind process as well. So maybe Tunde might have said it in a way that might have jogged to certain people and maybe it jogged him the way he said it. But again, I think, I think this was Tunde's words. Anthony Yard has a better skill set than Andre Wood. Now, when Tunde say, says that, I will elaborate on how I take that. And when Andre Wood was 18 fights in, in my opinion, he got hit more within that time. Um, he hadn't knocked out as many people within that time. I don't know about the opponents he was fighting or whatever. Um, I'm sure he'd even been dropped um, by that time. Andre Wood, you can't question what he's gone on and done. Hall of Famer, fantastic fighter. He's someone, I still follow him on Instagram. Even though he's saying bad things about me, I still follow Andre Wood because he's someone that's paved the way. And um, I was, he's someone that I was supporting when he's fighting Kovalev. He's someone that I was supporting when he was in his boxing career. So just because he says something um, negative towards me, it don't mean I'm going to, I'm not going to give that energy by saying, if I go and I'm following now, that means I've given what he said energy. It don't matter to me. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Just like when Tunde says something about him, Tunde's entitled to his opinion. He says something negative towards me, he's entitled to his opinion. It don't mean I'm going to judge him as a human being because of it. So that's just me. I told everybody I'm built different. I think different. Um, I don't think like everybody else. If someone does something to spite me, I'll say, God bless you. God bless you. Unless it gets me upset, I'm just saying. Don't get me upset. <laughs> don't get me angry. That's what I'm going to say to you. But if you say something within your own opinion, fair enough. I won't judge you for it. Almost there. Um, you say that you do things differently, you do things unconventionally under Tunze's system. Something that I've uh, sort of took Tunze to task on in, in our previous interviews is sparring. So my first question is, first of all, Coach AD, how much does he weigh? Say that name again. No! <laughs> 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 Coach Addy, how much does he weigh? Why are you correct him? I don't know, but Addy weighs, Addy's a big boy. He's a big boy. He, he, he weighs a lot. I think he's, he's, he's way over 18 stone. Um, he's, he's over 18 stone. Solid muscle. <laughs> muscle and fat mixed together. You know, <laughs> a lion ain't just full muscle. A gorilla, yeah, it's full muscle. But um, Ade, is, Ade is very, very strong. From what I've heard about the sparring system, I find it really intriguing. But just quickly, talk to me about the benefits of, of sparring a 20, 22, 23 stone Ade in preparation for Kovalev. I, would, I wouldn't say uh, me and Ade spar. I will say we're just, we're, we're training. You know, um, same as me and Tunde, we train. Um, and I gotta, I gotta control myself in order to control my punches, control how much, what I'm putting behind the punches. Um, as you can see, I, I was hitting Ade today and the shots wasn't hard, but they were quick. So again, that's why I've learned to to throw certain shots that they're, they're not hard, but they're, they're quick and sharp, and then a hard shot might come behind it. Um, but again, the old Chinese movies, the Kung Fu movies, go back and watch them. The student used to spar with the, with the, the is it sen Sensei? <laughs> he used to spar with the Sensei. Then they'll go out to battle, come back, but practice. It's just called practice. Tunde again, with me and Tunde in the ring, Tunde throw shots at me and with, with hard ass pads on when I've got nothing like if I get hit by them they hurt but he's got hard pads on and things like that but it's again you're just practicing certain reactions and dipping and sliding and, and things like that and then again Tunde says I don't spar I do spar I do spar but we don't go and get sparring partners or oh, we need to go and spar this expo champion because he'll prepare us for, for this fight or for that fight I don't think it works like that Actually, I'll, um, best of luck come August 24th. Can you just sign off by telling us exactly what's going to happen on that night in Russia? Anthony Yard versus Sergei Kovalev. Let me take the mic. Let me take the mic. Lions in the camp. You know? <laughs> AY goes to Russia. Defeats Sergei Kovalev. By KO. The world goes crazy. Oh, we can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. Anthony Yard knocks out Kovalev. I ain't going to say which round. <laughs> but Anthony Yard knocks out Kovalev. Brings back home the world title. I've won a world title book before. I think I've got a picture somewhere. We went to um, a house. I won't say whose house it was. 
and um, there was a couple of world titles there. And um, I tried one on. And then you know Space Jam, remember Space Jam? When they go and take the talent. <laughs> the Space Jam, when, and then they go big and turn into these monsters. That's the day I turned into a monster. Not a monster, a monster. You dig? Sand in that, Awa, Lions in the camp. We give this mark a bit of promotion. Tune into BT Sports. Pro boxing fans. Huh? Pro boxing fans. Yeah, but you interrupted me. I was going to get to that. Awa <laughs> goes to Russia. 24th of August. Big up pro boxing fans. On that outcome. I don't like that sound. Do that sound again in the camera. I ain't going to do it myself. I don't like the sound. I think this is a follower sign. Everyone just sees it and wants a copy. I don't like it. I don't like it. Show me what sign you prefer. Just the normal, the original is the. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the middle finger. You know the middle finger. The, the point. <laughs> but um, no. All jokes aside, tuning to BT Sports on the 24th of August, 2019. Just so you don't get confused. Lions in the camp.